the National Mosque, Abuja, and we're going to be speaking to Hajia Sahia. She's part of the coalition of uh, Nigerian Muslim women, and she's speaking to us about her experiences and her uh, the, uh, achievement and all that stuff. Uh, Salam alaikum, Hajia. Salam alaikum, Salam alaikum. Um, um, you, the coalition of Nigerian Muslim women started organizing uh, what it has been in Abuja since 2014. So that's how long they have come. I think if you have been with them so long, what was what were your personal reasons? The reasons why you became part of this such a cause? I personally feel that every uh, Muslim woman should be aware, and even the non-Muslim, yeah. they should be aware of the importance of uh, wearing the hijab. Mm. Uh, it's part of our uh, clothing, and uh, it is noble. And it is encourage, we encourage the Muslim women to cover her chastity. It is in the Quran. It is ordained. It is the decree of Allah that we should always keep our aura covered. And uh, if you look at it, even in the society, morally speaking, a woman should hide her diamonds, if I may put it that way, in a lighter <laughs> note, <laughs> you know, because every part of a woman is an attraction. Good. So, you cover whatever it is that you need to cover, so that you leave the rest for just your husband. So when you have something that is precious, you're, you when you have value. something that is precious, you are right. Yeah. When you have something that is precious, you cover it and you take care of it, yeah. basically. Yeah. So that, that's the main aim. That's the of the World Hijab Day. Yes. As, um, what are the, uh, this year the unity and diversity? The theme for this year, you know, the objective seeks to keep the hijab uh, discourse fully in the public domain and to remind we as Muslims, uh, hijab wearers, of, as they are, of their roles as ambassadors. Of Islam. So, what would you say to those of us who wear who have who wear hijab on occasions? You know, there are some people who okay, this is a hijab occasion. Let me wear hijab today. Yeah. I actually yesterday, mm -hmm. I was uh, I, I, I I I didn't get to go to the press conference, mm -hmm. but I got a clip mm -hmm. of what happened during the press conference. Mm -hmm. And a man stood up and he asked. He said, after the World Hijab Day, a lot of times the hijab is kept on one side. Right. And even if it's not, they wear it just for one week and it's over. Well, to me, I don't think it's a, it's a right thing to do. I have been carrying the veil since at very young age. I started wearing hijab fully some years, way, way back. Oh. And people ask me, oh. do you feel, don't you feel hot yeah. inside? Most Especially the during the heat season. Yeah, yeah, that's most of the question. Apparently, yeah. when I used to see women dress, you know, with a hijab and all that, I'll be like, ah, ah, really, it's hot. Oh. Can't they just <laughs> use a veil and yeah. get it over and done with, yeah. you know? And alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, I now realize that, yes, the weather is hot, but no, I feel the normal heat that every other woman feels, whether she's wearing the hijab or not. Allah is a very merciful God. There is a way you feel this um, cool breeze inside you. <laughs> and even your skin, when you take off the hijab and you look at your skin, it is very different. Everywhere that you cover properly, it's, it's different. You can see, sometimes you see our palms, they look a little bit dark, the feet a little bit dark, yeah. but every other place that is covered is glowing. And that is the nur of Allah. Yeah. It is it's, it's a natural thing. And alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, yes, you do feel the heat when you wear the hijab, but it's the normal heat that every normal person feels whether the person is in hijab or not. So that means it boils down to understanding your reason for wearing it then. 
understanding as a Muslim, understanding your reasons for wearing it. Exactly. Because if you really love what you do, if you love what you wear, mm -hmm. you understand the meaning, the essence of it. Exactly. Yeah, I don't think the society, peer uh, group, whatever it is, would dissuade you from such. You no, know, sometimes, you know, they look at it as if we're being oppressed, as if it's not fashionable. But guess what? As far as I'm concerned, the Muslim woman is one of the most fashionable women on earth. Yes. <laughs> Mashallah. Yeah. Everything we do it, it depicts, to me, it's, you know, lovely, loveliness, if I to may put it that way. You know? Yeah. Because it, it, is, it just brings out, I just feel, it brings out the beauty in a woman. I don't... But let me, let, let's digress a little bit. Right. Our young stars these days, the kind of fashion style you see around these days is, is, is uh, ridiculous. And unfortunately, you see some of our Muslim women, youths, dress in that manner. And uh, you begin to wonder, why? You know, could, could the reason be, like, you know, sometimes, okay, there's this notion where you see when someone is fully like this, covered, you, you get the, the notion that, okay, she's married. And some of the single Muslims who are trying to secure, you know, try to, okay, let me, let me, okay. Let me make it a little short, let me try to be a little sexy. Yeah, right look to, nice, beautiful, yeah, okay. To, to be able to get that attention, because people just assume, some people, that, the okay, moment you wear of them, she's yeah, married. Yeah, she's married, that she's okay. married. So, so how do we, that, maybe that might be the reason. Okay. If, being, if that being the case, you do not need to go that far. Sometimes they wear tight skin leggings, as in tight skin leggings, with a, with a, with a short top that is exposing almost everywhere. And because so that you know she's a Muslim girl, yeah. she now put a very short hijab, all her hands exposed and every other part of her body. You understand what I'm saying? Just to show that, yeah, she's a Muslim girl, young lady, and probably not married. And you know the sad part? Sometimes you even see even the married sisters, very, very married sisters, dress in that manner. And it's okay. We are all striving to make Jannah, to please Allah. Everybody is doing their bit. We, nobody is without blemish. But we do, we, we try as much as possible to do our bit, yeah. as much as we can. Yeah. And may Allah grant us mercy, guidance, and forgiveness. And by the way, guidance comes from Allah. Yeah. Guidance comes only from Allah. Yeah. So if Allah guides you and he puts you on the right path for you to understand the reason why, you know, it is decreed for us as women to cover our chastity, to wear the hijab, mashallah. And I pray that Allah should guide all Muslim women and even the non-Muslims to also understand and appreciate the reason why we dress the way we dress. It is, it is the guidance of Allah. And sometimes it's really sad because this so-called Westernization also deceives a lot of our sisters into dressing in not so modest way reason is this they think because you wear the hijab but they have forgotten that the hijab does not cover your intellect it does not cover your brains it does not cover whatever it is that you have upstairs of recent we know of a lady that bagged in a, i think in the university of ibado one sister i think is uh, if i if i'm not mistaken uh, in medicine she bagged almost she bagged almost all the uh, award for excellence and she's a hijab wearing sister she's a hijab wearing sister very very intelligent and you can see a lot of times when 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 you see such hijab wearing sisters in schools they are very intelligent it does not cover anything it doesn't. And as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't change what you have to offer in the society. 
The only thing is that we are praying that the society should give us the, the enabling environment to strive. Because honestly speaking, even we as Muslims, sometimes when you see your fellow Muslim sister all covered up, you look at her like, ah, what's wrong with her? She's too much. She's fanatical and all what have you. But it's not fanatical and it is not being, we're not being oppressed. It is a noble thing and alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, we pray that may Allah guide all the sisters because it is not your doing, it is not what you know, it is not what you don't know, it is not that you're better than the other sister, no you are not. It is the guidance of Allah. We wrap it up there. Yes. And may Allah guide us. I mean, I mean, thank you so much, It was, it was a pleasure speaking to her. Yes, it's not your doing. It's a guidance from Allah. But we have to strive. We have to try to always strive to get Jannah by wearing and covering ourselves. So may Allah make it easy for all of us. I mean, Just Allah. nice having you. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you so much. Yeah, sorry, my dear. Yeah. Uh, oh. Oops. Okay. <laughs> you forgot. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs>
or maybe convinced you, maybe tell you, of course, that's the right thing. You need to show off a little bit beauty. And yeah. you're still young, you're still small. Come on, but there's some people who are actually going through that. People tell them, come on, yeah. You're, uh, yeah, you're still young, come on, it's not if you're old enough. So just wear the, just come out and show up some beauty. It won't harm anybody. It won't, people don't even look at you, you're still young and all that. So at what age do you think? Do you think it's about age, maybe? I when don't you think it's about age because when I was young, let me see, by when I, three years old, I guess, I wear the hijab. Wow. But when I started um, growing, maybe, let me see. 10, I'm like, okay, let me just, okay, I don't care about the hijab or something like that. And then at the end of the day, I realized that the hijab is actually, uh, as I said, it's a clear on call. Yeah, I can put it at, it's a clear on call because it is not, it is not like, it's, it's not choosy. It is by force that Muslims should put hijab. So I feel like the hijab is like a really great thing. Yeah, so I also I think, our parents also and they have a role to play like like you said wait at, at a very young age so if you start wearing the hijab or as a parent you start putting the hijab on for your little daughters you start like you say you lead by example you just don't tell go and wear a hijab and then mommy is wearing the hijab mommy only wears when she's going out to some occasions but um but if you start she starts seeing you doing that and you have what you buy for yourself you buy hers you know if you could do that with the echo kind of stuff i think it goes a long way to show us uh, the child an example you know, so um, what advice would you give? Because there are some people, yeah, young youngsters, youth who are going through this uh, confusion. We like to think like maybe. I feel like, like they just feel insecure about putting the hijab on. Maybe when they go out, okay, I'm the only one putting on hijab yeah, with my friends. Yes, yeah. So I feel like they should just be a normal person. They don't have to be following other people because they should be themselves. They should be themselves. They should be themselves. But that, that's a great one. I would end it there because I like that. They should, you should be yourself because that's with what defines you. You don't let people tell you who you are. You tell people who you are. I like that part where she entered it, ended it there. That's Sister Fos, yeah. And Alhamdulillah, may Allah make it easy for us. You need to understand yourself. That's a lesson she just dropped. You need to be yourself. Tell people, show people who you are. Do not let them define who you are. May Allah make it easy for us. We are still discussing this stuff. We are still going further. We hope Allah makes it easy for all of us. And then um, going back to my speech, to my talk, the hijab, to me, I think, yeah, most of us, when we are born into Muslim homes, we, yes, automatically we are Muslims because we are born in Muslim homes, we are born in a, an Islamic family, so we tend to, yeah, it becomes a uniform, like, yeah, it's a part of our clothing, we just have to wear it because my mother says so, you wear it because my sister says so, my dad is going to get angry, um, so, but it goes beyond that. As parents, we need to not make our children fear, you know, uh, of losing something to be able to put the hijab on. It should not be like, uh, how would I put it, that you have to gain something for putting it on. You have to make them, give them the therapy to understand. You have to teach them. Let them know the reason why they are wearing it. Let them know uh, uh, the blessings attached to it so that when you're not there, they will be able to adorn themselves with hijab and then you have to lead by example for our mothers especially you can't tell your child go put on the hijab and you are not wearing yours or you okay, know you're only wearing it for some occasions and then you tell her go and wear the hijab she won't she might only do it in your presence because you're there or because she might she might be punished if she doesn't but she won't continue it won't stick because she doesn't see you do that you lead by example so alhamdulillah some of us feel okay because we are born in muslim homes obviously we wear the hijab but this cause, this word which are they seek to create that awareness for Muslims and not Muslims alike. As Muslims, we know why we wear the hijab and how to be able to represent it. Because the hijab, as we've spoken, is not just a piece of clothing. It's what we say. It's what we do. It's how we address others. The peace we give out, the tranquility and the noble character. So right now we'll be joining this uh, um, lecture inside the hall we'll come back to give you more hints uh, we'll come back to give you more uh topic we'll come back to give you uh, to speak to you more and enlighten you more about the word hijab the reasons why you should wear the hijab and be ambassadors of islam uh do not forget to like us follow us on facebook twitter and like our pages and also subscribe to our youtube channel imedia tv until we back in we go to join the uh, the, uh, the lecture inside the hall Inshallah.
Part of the women in Dawa and the other Muslim coalitions, the Pongwan, Naspat, uh, so many of them, they organize various medical outreaches, which we are always a part of. Uh, various lectures all through the year, the one Umma, uh, where they bring together so many other uh, uh, important speakers from across the world. All these are things that show that indeed the Muslim woman is an important part of the community. It's not just about um, we're here to be in the home, giving birth, but we do play a very vital role in different aspects of development. And so we must continue to do this. I direct my speech or this aspect of my talk to my daughters in the audience in particular. Uh, some of them have presented including the he for she that very eloquently supported us. Uh, and I want you to continue to do what you're doing. I know that you have taught this in your schools, uh, but please continue to pro propagate the course of Islam and to listen very well and don't feel inhibited by your hijab. It is your pride and wear it and also all the things that you were taught. It is not always easy. Uh, some of us, I was not always in a hijab or I was not always properly dressed right up to the university level. I remember in UG1, in fact, or pre-med, pre, pre it was uh, some of my colleagues, females, and I thank them very much for it today, came to me one day in class and said, why don't you pray with us? I said to them, because I'm not properly dressed. So they said to me, why don't you dress properly so that when it's prayer time, we can all pray together. And from that day onwards, I started to dress properly. This was in Sokoto when I was still in school in Sokoto. And from then onwards, it was easier for me. I didn't have to keep my prayers until I went back to the room. It wasn't that I didn't cover my head, but I didn't have a, the proper hijab on. Uh, and so gradually, you start to imbibe the right way of living, of, right from dressing and you're able to do your prayers on time and this really helps your life and generally. There are some schools, I would like to make this point and I hope that the media will help us to get this message across. There are some schools that still prohibit wearing of hijab or even just simply covering the head right here in our country or should I say in Abuja. I think that this is wrong. If we say that um, life gives us freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and the ability and the right to choose what we believe in, the same way that they are able to choose not to wear a hijab, we should be able, or anyone else should be able to choose 
to cover his or her head if they so wish. I have a five-year-old niece who cannot cover her head when she goes to school. And this is very wrong. And I'd like to call on the coalition to look at this and see if there's something they can do about it. It doesn't happen in the States, but it happens in the uh, bigger capitals like Abuja. There are some international schools that actually prohibit our children from wearing um, the right clothing. Uh, sometimes they say it is in the, in the, in the uh, setup of their school, in their laws, and if you choose to send your children to those kind of schools, it is your choice. But we can still push for uh, a change in these laws right from the Abuja uh, Federal Capital Territory, the education uh, institutions. I'm sure that some of you here might actually be working with them and it's important that we do that. Uh, so, and I'd be very willing to lend my voice to any coalition that wants to look at something like that. So once more, I'd like to congratulate everybody here and urge us to continue to do what we have to do to empower our, our fellow sisters so that we can propagate the course of Islam and progress our country and development of the Muslim Ummah, in particular, the female as a whole. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Your Excellency, the representative of the First Lady of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Your Excellency, wife of the former Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Your Excellency, Hajia Zainab Babudu, wife of the Executive Governor, Kevin Fate, other members of the high table, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I bring you greetings and uh, goodwill message from the Director General of the largest TV network in Africa the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. Uh, he would have really loved to be here today to be a part of this program because he believes in it. But unfortunately, due to other national assignments, he is not able to be here. But because of the importance he attaches to this program and uh, because he is proud of what the coalition is doing, he has asked me to be here on his behalf. So permit me to start by commending members of the Coalition of Muslim Women in Nigeria who have consistently and continuously organized this event, which is meant to create awareness on the use of hijab and to send messages out there so that people can learn, can understand the use of the hijab, can appreciate the use of the hijab, can 
even try using the hijab if they so wish. Uh, I must commend their commitment, their dedication, their hard work. Um, we in the NTA believe and we're working very hard to realize our mandate, which is to educate, inform, and entertain. And in the course of doing this, we partner with like-minded government organizations, individuals, and even non-governmental organizations to inform, educate, and entertain. And over the years, we have found the coalition of uh, Muslim women in Nigeria as one organization that we have partnered with over the years to create awareness on issues that affect Muslim women, including the use of the hijab. So I must say that uh, over the years, a lot of achievements have been recorded towards creating awareness on the use of hijab. Uh, more people are now more tolerant of people who wear hijab. Uh, more people understand and appreciate the use of hijab. More people, even non-Muslims now, use the hijab. That is uh, kudos to the coalition. And that is a testimony of the effort and time and energy they have put into towards creating awareness. Alhamdulillah. But I must say that a lot still needs to be done. Uh, there are a lot of issues arising as a result of the use of the hijab. We all know that uh, the use of the hijab should be uh, part of our fundamental human rights, which is entrenched in the Nigerian constitution. We should have a choice, freedom of choice, on what to do, when we want to do it, and how we should do it. I would like to pledge the continued support and cooperation of the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, towards this issue and any other issue that is of great importance to Muslim women and women in general. Uh, we'll continue to partner with you, we'll continue to encourage you, we'll continue to support you so that we can create awareness on a number of issues that would be beneficial uh, to all of us. Once again, I would like to congratulate the coalition for a successful event. I'd like to wish us all a happy World Hijab Day. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. There's no doubt to just settle, just go home and relax for 9 p.m. Just go home. When you go home, relax very well. Wash your face. Don't feel as if. If you don't have never food there, so that by 9, just cross your leg. If you like, be taking a cup of tea or coffee because we are sure that this program is coming on air at 9 o'clock this evening. Yes, that was our face on the Nigerian Television Authority. We meet her on Wednesday's News Extra, but then she has risen to a greater height. I forgot to tell you or let you know when I was introducing her that she is the present general manager of NTA Abuja, even though she's representing the director general of the Nigerian Television Authority. Sister Fatima Abad, she has been a role model you have actually propelled a lot of young girls to want to grow up to be like you. And uh, when some of us grow up, when I grow up, I want to be like the person I have Very quickly, um, I forgot a very, very important reason I ought to have said before now. Her Excellency, the wife of the governor of KB State, has been contributing and actually made tremendous contribution to Dawa in Nigeria. And on that note, women in Dawa did one of their activities in KP, as I mean in KP, conferred on her the Mujahida. I 
thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for being part of us this morning. Uh, I want to also very quickly invite pharmacist Idaya Olivinovo, if she's here, just give us a quick good will message. Pharmacist Idaya, are you here? Please make it very, very short and snappy.
Thank you very much, uh, Haji Umar Farouk, the Amir MPD, the Hijab Muslim Professionals in Dawa, okay? The MPD actually means Muslim Professionals in Dawa, that was the Amir. He said hijab is a command and wearing the hijab is an obligation upon us all. The next concluding message is the representative of the Amir Street Dawa organization. If the representative is here, please can you come up and give us a very, very short good message. The representative of the Amir Street Dawa organization. Please make it short. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, we give us thanks, adoration, and glorification to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has made it possible for each and every one of us to be here today to grace this occasion. I'm representing Mustafa Nawal Ali, the Amir Bul Amir of Sri Dawa, Nigeria, who is unavoidably here due to the loss of his grandmother yesterday. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant our granny Jannah to Sri A goodwill message to you all, our mothers, our wives, our sisters, and our daughters. The hijab is your greatest pride and symbol of that iman. The level of your hijab is a representation of the level of your iman. Therefore, our dear sisters in Islam, if the level shows your intent, then wear it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward us all for our strives and struggles in following the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will unite us here in this world all in our diversities and also unite our beautiful, beautiful faces in gender. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much. Hijab is the level of my iman. Thank you very much, brother. Our latest Omar is unavoidably absent this year. And if you have been an ardent, uh, should I say, observer of the world hijab day, you agree with me that year in, year out, she has always been with us. But for this year's event, she is not with us. She is on our way to the and we pray that Allah Muhammad Allah, Allah guide and protect her wherever she is. But then she has sent a very powerful representative. Perhaps she may not know the person I'm talking about. She is the wife of the former Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Her Excellency Heja Amina Nabadi Sambo who is on a very absent, but then we have a very, very powerful representative here who is going to give us a message. She is Barista Sarah Tushahi. Please can you come to the podium and deliver a message of uh, the sister to Uma to us. Assalamu alaikum, sisters and brothers. Uh, as she has said, I'm here to represent Her Excellency Haja Aminana Majisambu, the woman I would like to refer to as the total Muslim woman. Uh, she has been a great support to the coalition and she's very passionate about the world hijab day 
And in fact, everything is love. She has a passion for it. She's unavoidably absent, and she's asked me to represent her. Although, uh, I would not be able to fit into her shoes, but I will try my best. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. There is no any written message. But as we know, when a day is dedicated to a subject matter, it is to create awareness for that subject matter. The world will just be started. And as we know, all over the world now, the issue of hijab has taken another dimension. In fact, when you are on the social media, you will always be so happy and glad at the rate the Western world is going to jump. And even in Nigeria here, although we have a lot of people that are still resistant to the hijab, they are for white advocates here for all Muslim sisters, especially the younger ones. Education is key. Any argument you want to win, you must be educated and knowledgeable about it. Knowledge is power. When Mertaba Sarki Kano was the central bank governor, it was with knowledge and intelligence that he won all the battles. So my sisters, especially our daughters, read, read and read. Read about the Quran. What is written there about the hijab? Most of most times it is ignorance and lack of knowledge. If you read, read even the Bible, it is written there. The verses are there where God said women must be modest, must dress properly. So that when there is an argument, you say that God has, has said it even in the Bible. It's not only in the Quran. Therefore, it is a divine order of the Almighty Allah. I'm happy that the one who just did is gaining prominence. And to tell you the truth today, the icing of the cake for me was Kamal, the little boy. It is very important that our children, the, our sons, should know the importance of the job. Because we've had experiences where it is your husband that will tell you, I don't want to see you in this hijab. We have had senior brothers that will come to our house. Is it your husband that actually is wearing this thing? You know, it's because they don't know. So knowledge, knowledge is the most important weapon for this fight. May Allah make it easy for all of us Muslims. And I will pray that the foundation maybe in their next lecture should try and show people what hijab is. Hijab doesn't necessarily mean you have to be in this uh, in this uh, kind of dress alone. There should be other ways that you show because there are different tribes, as she has said in our lecture, different things in our diversity. People that wear the fire, they are probably Hijab. People, you know, the people that go to the office, they wear suits that are proper and they wear the head covering. So there's a need for enlightenment, proper enlightenment of what is hijab. May Allah reward everyone with a journey to fidels. And as Hajjah Amina normally say everything we do, she said, May Allah, may Allah put it on your design for you. May Allah strengthen her in everything she has been doing for Islam. May Allah bless her family and bless everybody that she has touched his life. Alhamdulillah, we pray with Allah. Asakim, thank you very much, sister. You have been presented and represented very, very beautifully. May Allah swan of Allah reward you immensely. My dear sisters, we are moving gradually to the banking box. It is time now to take a remark from a special guest of honor, 
the First Lady of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Her Excellency Hajia Aisha Bukhari, who is also unavoidably absent, but has sent another powerful representative to represent her in this forum. I'm talking about Hajia Mariam Abdullahi, she's a former SCT Form 1 Amira. I call on you, Hajia, to please kindly come on the podium to deliver the remarks of our special guest of honor to us. We have among us uh, our participants or our guests who do not actually understand English, and on that note, uh, the representative of the First Lady will be giving her remark in Hausa for the benefit of those non-English speaking audience. Thank you. Those